We're now about ready to apply some texture maps onto surfaces. It's important to know that even if the CAD document originally had textures or decals, those are not saved when the document is exported out to, for example, a step file. So there's no way to actually preserve any of the decals that were in the original CAD document. That means it's the visualizer's job to recreate that if it already exists. To facilitate the process of assigning materials to parts of objects, we want to break the object apart and detach certain surfaces. That's just way easier than using a multi-subobject material. And to illustrate that, I can get in a little bit closer in the perspective view with Control, Alt, and Middle Mouse and display edges on selected objects. If I select that chassis object, we can't really see very well because it's black, but we can enable the display of edged faces on selected objects. That's done in the viewport menu. The rightmost menu here is the so-called per view preference menu. It's currently labeled default shading. Click on that and choose display selected, display selected with edged faces. And now the selected object shows wireframe superimposed over shading. So here's an area for a logo. I want that to be a separate material than the surrounding area. Also likewise with this down here, which is the model number. So I'll just detach those surfaces to separate objects. With that chassis selected, go up into the modify panel. In the body object parameters, we want to open up the section labeled object parameters. And we want to be in face selection mode. And then select the face that we want to detach and click detach. That's saved out to a separate object. We want to do the same for this area down here. We'll need to go back into face selection mode, select that face, and again detach. Then we want to rename those objects. So click off to select nothing. Select the logo object and rename it logo. Select the model number object and rename it model number. There's another surface I want to detach, which is the LCD screen. It's actually part of the display frame object. So I'll navigate with the middle mouse button, select this frame and just isolate it. We can click on the isolate selection button. And we want to detach this central area here, which is going to be the LCD display screen. Once again, go into face selection mode, select that face, click detach, select the object and rename it display LCD. Okay, we can exit out of isolate selection mode. And we want to make sure that the objects we've recently detached are in the correct layers and also in the correct animation hierarchy. So open up the layer explorer and we see display LCD logo and model number. Select those with the control key, drag them over into the radio layer. Now they're in the proper layer. They also need to be parented to the radio helper so we can open up the scene explorer. And those selected objects are not children of the radio helper. We can just drag them over on top of the radio helper and now they've been parented. Okay, we can verify that. We can close that scene explorer and just make sure that the parenting is correctly done. We can select our radio helper in the perspective view, select it, grab the rotate tool and we can rotate in any viewport just to make sure that all those objects are parented. Very good. I'll restore the rotations to neutral, just setting them all to zero. And now we're ready to apply a UVW map. To facilitate that, we're going to select a whole bunch of objects and apply a single UVW map modifier to all of them. So I'll go back to Select Object. And in the Layer Explorer, I want to select the LCD screen. It's going to be a little bit difficult to select that in the viewport because it's hiding behind a piece of glass. So open up the Radio Layer. Scroll down and select Display LCD. And we can select the remainder of the objects directly in the viewport. With Focus on the Perspective View, let's maximize it with Alt W. And we can go around and select all the other objects that we want to map. Starting from this big button here, hold down Control and select that. Then we have two buttons on either side here. We've got the logo. All 16 of these lower buttons 
can see we're selecting those and they're highlighting in the Layer Explorer. And finally, this model number object down here, control select that as well. We've got 22 objects selected. We can see that here in the Modify panel. Now we're ready to add the UVW map modifier. So from the modifier list, scroll down and choose UVW map. And if we orbit or tumble with Alt and Middle Mouse, there is a gizmo here, but it's not aligned correctly. So the mapping gizmo is aligned to the Z axis. Let's switch that over to the Y axis. And we can make that a little bit easier to see by opening up the UVW map modifier subobject types. Select the gizmo, and then with the Move tool active, just move it out in the Y axis. There's our mapping gizmo. So let's change up the width and height. Set them both to a value of 10 centimeters. And now that's very large. It's actually larger than it needs to be. If we orbit around once again, it's not just the area covered by all these objects, but it's got a wide margin around it. But that's okay, because we don't need to worry about wasting bitmap resolution in this case, because I'm going to be using a vector graphic. And in that case, we don't have to worry about resolution at all. It's actually more important that this is a square, and that makes it easier for us to keep our sanity. We just want to make sure that the gizmo is in the right position. With that gizmo selected, and the Move tool active down here, we see it's at an X position of zero. The Y position doesn't actually matter because it's projecting at right angles to this plane. So changing the Y position doesn't actually change the mapping coordinates. The Z position is currently 4.785. In order to match the exercise files exactly, I'm going to increase this a little bit to 4.794. It just came about from the positioning that I used when I originally created the texture maps we'll be using later. All right, we've got our UVW mapping applied onto all the objects that are going to need a texture.